There's a crisis unfolding in the American West, and most people have no idea it's happening. It's not in the headlines. It's not even visible to the eye, because this emergency is hiding underground. Over the past two decades, scientists discovered something chilling. The land beneath millions of Americans is quietly losing water, at a scale almost no one expected. We're not just talking about lakes and rivers running low. We're talking about 28 million acre feet of groundwater, enough to supply every home in California for years. Just gone. And the scariest part? We didn't even know it was happening until a pair of satellites started tracking gravity. That's right, gravity. These satellites, part of NASA's GRACE mission, can detect tiny changes in Earth's mass caused by shifts in water underground. And when they turned their gaze toward the Colorado River Basin, the results were staggering. The land wasn't just dry, it was draining. Quietly, constantly, irreversibly. And what they found below the surface was far worse than what we'd lost above it. The Colorado River isn't just a river, it's the lifeline of the American Southwest. It provides drinking water for nearly 40 million people, from Denver to Los Angeles. In other words, nearly one in eight Americans depends on it every single day. Its reach even extends beyond the U.S., supplying water to parts of Mexico through a century-old treaty. It irrigates 5.5 million acres of farmland, fields that grow lettuce, alfalfa, and citrus, crops that feed the nation and fuel exports around the world. Economically, the river is worth billions. It powers cities through massive hydroelectric dams like Hoover and Glen Canyon, and it keeps the lights on in Las Vegas, Phoenix, and countless desert communities that simply couldn't exist without it. In other words, take away the Colorado and modern life in the Southwest collapses. But here's the catch. This lifeline runs through some of the driest land in North America which means it's always been at risk. And when drought or overuse shrinks the river on the surface, cities and farms turn to its hidden reserve, groundwater. But here's the truth no one wants to face. We're not just draining the river on the surface. We're draining its hidden backup supply underground. The worst of it is happening in the lower basin, Arizona, Nevada, and California. These states rely heavily on groundwater when surface water runs short. But that's created a dangerous paradox. Every time drought tightens its grip on the river, farmers and cities drill deeper. And every time they drill deeper, the aquifers fall further. It's a feedback loop. The drier the river gets, the more we pump. And the more we pump, the faster the underground reservoirs collapse. When most people hear the word aquifer, they imagine an underground lake, a vast cavern of water waiting to be tapped. But that's not reality. Aquifers are layers of sand, gravel, and porous rock they hold water in the tiny spaces between grains, like a sponge. Now here's the problem. When we pump gently, water flows out and the sponge refills with rain and snow melt. But when we pump too hard, the pressure holding those pores open collapses. And just like a sponge that's been crushed flat, it never springs back. Geologists call this compaction, and it's permanent. Once an aquifer's storage space is destroyed, no technology can reopen it. Think about that. We're not just draining water, we're erasing the very capacity to store water for the future, and the consequences don't stop underground. When those layers collapse, the surface above them can literally sink. It's called land subsidence. And in parts of the Southwest, it's already visible. Fields, roads, even homes have dropped by several feet, all because the ground beneath them is caving in. The more we pump, the more the earth sinks. The more the earth sinks, the less space remains for water. It's a downward spiral that accelerates with every drought year. And here's the chilling part. Even as aquifers collapse, we're forced to chase what's left. That means deeper wells, saltier water, and costs that grow with every gallon pulled from the ground. When aquifers collapse, the damage doesn't stay hidden. It spreads across the economy, the land, and eventually into people's homes. The first hit is cost. Farmers who once tapped water at 200 feet now have to drill wells twice as deep. Each new well can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, and the pumps that power them burn through staggering amounts of electricity. For cities, it means higher water bills as utilities chase groundwater that is harder and more expensive to reach. Then comes quality. As we dig deeper, the water that surfaces isn't fresh snowmelt from the Rockies. It's ancient, often salty water trapped for centuries. In some regions of Arizona and California, salinity levels have climbed so high that the water requires costly treatment just to be drinkable. It's like squeezing the last drops out of a sponge, only to find those drops are bitter. And then, the land itself begins to sink. 
This is called land subsidence, and it's already happening. In parts of Arizona's agricultural valleys, the ground has dropped by as much as 20 feet over the last century. Roads buckle, canals warp, homes crack, and once the ground collapses, that storage space for water is destroyed forever. Hydrologist Dr. Kareem Abdelmosin, who led a 2025 study on the Colorado Basin, put it bluntly, groundwater in the Colorado River Basin won't run out, but eventually we won't be able to get at it. That's the terrifying truth. The water is still there, but locked away, deeper and saltier, sinking out of reach. And as bad as the fallout looks today, the future projections are even more sobering because the underground collapse isn't slowing down, it's accelerating. If the present looks dire, the future may be worse. The US Geological Survey warns that base flow, the groundwater that naturally seeps into rivers and keeps them alive during dry months, could drop by nearly 30% in just the next 30 years. Why does that matter? Because base flow is what keeps the Colorado moving when snowpack is gone and rain is scarce. Without it, the river becomes a flash flood in spring and a trickle in summer. Layer on climate change and the math turns brutal. Hotter temperatures mean more evaporation. Snow melts earlier, leaving less to feed rivers during peak demand. And parched soils absorb what little water does arrive before it can ever reach the channel. The result? Even in so-called normal years, the Colorado may run at historic lows. A river system designed to support 40 million people could struggle to supply half that. And the decline isn't just about numbers on a chart, it's about cities forced to ration farms abandoned because pumping is too costly, reservoirs that no longer fill. A river that once carved the Grand Canyon, reduced to a shadow of itself. So the question becomes, are we willing to act now? Or will we wait until the West's hidden safety net is gone for good? There are efforts to slow the collapse. In Arizona, water managers are experimenting with artificial recharge, spreading excess river water into basins, letting it soak back into aquifers. Some regions have created active management areas where pumping is regulated and tracked to prevent overuse. And on farms, new technology, from drip irrigation to crop switching, is helping stretch every gallon. But here's the reality. These fixes are small compared to the scale of the crisis. As researcher Dr. Jay Familietti has warned, there has to be some discussion of total water availability, both above and below ground, and how that water can be used sustainably over the next century Right now, policy lags far behind science. And every year we delay, the safety net beneath the Colorado River collapses a little more. The Colorado River isn't just drying up on the surface. It's losing the hidden reserves that once made life in the West possible. A sponge that held water for millennia is now collapsing in a single human lifetime. And once that storage is gone, it's gone forever. The crisis beneath the Colorado may be invisible, but it's already shaping the future of the American West. If you lived in these states, would you trust the river to survive another century? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I want to know if you think the collapse can still be stopped, or if we're already too late.